Hello and welcome to another Science Revision video. Now in this short video we're going to cover the topic of osmosis and active transport. Let's first of all start off by defining what is osmosis. Well you may come across diffusion, what well, osmosis is a special type of diffusion. Okay, So by definition osmosis is a special type of diffusion and what it involves is simply diffusion of water molecules. So in osmosis we're only talking about diffusion of water molecules from an area of high water concentration to an area of lower water concentration through a partially permeable membrane. Okay, now read that again, make sure you fully understand it. So, hang on, a partially permeable what? We're talking about membrane. Now in some books you may see this as partially permeable, other books semi-permeable, and in other books differentially permeable, but it all means the same thing. What it is, it's as a membrane, and the membrane has got little holes in. Okay, imagine a tea bag, got little holes, and little perforations. Then you can see here what we've got here: we've got a high water concentration on this side, and a low water concentration on this side. Sometimes it's difficult to get your head around these high and low concentrations. It's the number of particles you've got. So on this side here, the, can you see the blue ones are water particles? There are more water particles on this side than there are on this side. So this has got a higher water concentration. This has got a lower water concentration. Imagine these green ones here are um, sugar. So here we've got a very dilute sugar solution. Now dilute means loads of water present, so few solute particles. The sugar is a solute, okay, and lots of water. So here we've got a dilute sugar solution because there's few solute particles and loads of water. Now, water particles because of, remember diffusion, they'll tend to move from where there's lots of them to where there's fewer. So the water particles will move from the left hand side here to the right hand side until they're equally distributed. So water particles will continue to move until there are equal numbers of water molecules on both sides of the membrane. Now notice that the sugar can't get through. The sugar's too big. It can't get through. So even though there's more sugar this side than this side, it won't move because the holes are too small for it. You got that? Okay, let's look at one of these in practice. Now here is a root hair cell. This is a root of a plant. Picture it. This is a root hair cell. Very, very long and thin. Now, inside the root hair cell, you've got a concentrated solution, i.e. less water. On the outside, you've got a less concentrated solution, which means more water, more dilute. Now, in root hair cells, water moves from the surrounding soil into the cell by osmosis. So there's more water out here than there is in there. So water will move through the cell membrane, is our um, partially permeable membrane. Water will move from outside to inside of the cell. Okay? Let's look at this in an experimental situation. Here we've got what's called dialysis tubing. You may have come across this before. Sometimes it's called visking tubing. So visking tubing is here and in the visking tubing what we've done we put some sugar solution and we've tied off both ends. Now and also here we've got two beakers. On the left side here we've got pure water. Now if you place a visking tubing or dialysis tubing into pure water, water moves from outside where there's much more water to inside where there's less water through the membrane which is partially permeable. So water enters by osmosis, the tubing swells up. Now imagine you put it into a very concentrated sugar solution. So this time there's more water inside the tubing than outside. So water moves from inside the tubing to outside, so the tubing shrivels up. Okay? That's osmosis in practice. Let's see an experiment you may have done this one involving potato chips. Now here's a potato chip. We put our potato chip into pure water. The water concentration outside the chip is higher than the water concentration inside the chip. Therefore, water enters by osmosis, and the potato chip gains weight. Now, if you put it into a very strong sugar solution, there's now more water inside the chip than outside the chip. Therefore, water will leave by osmosis. Water only leaves through the membrane, and so your potato chip will actually lose mass. Got it? If you're not sure, just go back and watch the last few slides again. Now, what's this thing called active transport? Right. Well, active
active transport is moving substances against a concentration gradient. Imagine this here being a gradient, okay? And imagine you're trying to push a trolley up a hill. Now, you've got to admit, if you were trying to push it up a hill, it will require energy. So, similarly, when substances are moved into a cell where there is already a higher concentration, then energy that we get from respiration will be required. Let's look at an example. Here's our root hair cell again. Now, inside the root hair cell, you already have a high concentration of what's called nitrate ions. Plants need nitrate ions for growth. Outside in the soil, there'll be some nitrate ions, but there'll be a lower concentration. So somehow, you've got to move the nitrate ions from outside inside. You can't do it by diffusion, because there's a lower concentration here than higher there. You can't do it by osmosis, because osmosis only involves, don't forget, water. So, what happens is we need to use energy. Energy will be used to effectively pull the nitrate ions against the concentration gradient from the surrounding soil into the cell. So it requires energy, and we use energy from respiration to do this. Okay? So diffusion is a passive process. Osmosis is a passive process. Neither of those require energy. Active transport requires energy, and we're moving stuff against a gradient. Now this also occurs in the human body. For example, in kidneys, as we'll come on in a later video, you recover sugar from the blood by transporting it against a concentration gradient. You don't want sugar being released into the urine. So all the sugar is being recovered by active transport against a concentration gradient back into the blood. Now what, what affects the movement of substances? Let's sort of think about three possible things. First of all, the surface area, for surface area to volume ratio. The bigger the surface area compared to volume, the faster the rate of movement of substances. And we talked about this about the lungs. Okay, so the bigger the surface area, the faster you can move substances. Um, temperature. Now as temperature increases, particles gain what we call kinetic energy. They therefore move faster, and because they move faster, diffusion, osmosis, and even active transport all occur at a faster rate. And lastly, the concentration gradient itself. The bigger the difference in concentration, for example, inside and outside, the faster substances will move. Now think about the steep hill. Osmosis and diffusion, now both of those are passive processes, they're going down the concentration gradient, remember? So the steeper the concentration gradient, the faster they'll move. Now think about active transport. The steeper the gradient, the more energy is going to be needed to move substances against the concentration gradient. So, osmosis, diffusion, the bigger the concentration gradient, the faster they'll move. With active transport, more energy will be required if the diffusion, if the, sorry, if the concentration gradient is steeper. Right, I hope you've understood this. If not, please go back and check things out again. Now you can um, see more free videos if you visit my site www.sciencerevisionvideo.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with you again very, very soon. Bye for now.